I'm Isabel Peterson. I'm Canada Research Chair in Digital Life, Media and Culture. I'm also Associate Professor at the University of Ontario Institute of Technology. My research at the University concentrates on the digital life paradigm of wearable computing, how we are moving towards that future. So it has a future focus bent to it. Back in uh, at around the turn of the century, 1999, I was a graduate student at the University of Waterloo and I began to hear about this idea of uh, technologists and mostly other graduate students who were saying that we should wear computers rather than adopt um, the idea of sitting in front of a desktop computer because that wasn't as, as desirable. You know, to sit in front of a computer at a desktop, it's a machine-centric paradigm. You're, you're, you're tied to your desk, you're tied to your machinery. And they began to evolve the idea of wearing computers and I became fascinated with this because I saw it as a truly human-centric interface. The idea if we wear our computers, um, we're not tied to them. We're not held back by them. And I concentrated my PhD on trying to understand what this means for humans. What does this mean for communication and social interaction? What does it mean for um, how we will conduct our life if we don't have to be tied to a computer sitting at a desk? Wearable computing was relatively unknown um, to sort of the mass market. People weren't talking about it until about two years ago when Google Glass announced on April 4th, 2012, that they were going to bring a wearable computer to the masses. And this changed the conversation dramatically. So we went sort of from zero to ten in the conversation around wearable computing. And that's one thing that's happening right now that we need to address. So we haven't really gone through the steps of um, addressing what does it mean for humans to wear technology, what does it mean for social interaction, what does it mean for education and health and journalism. Much of my research at UOIT really addresses this era of predictive advertising that we're dealing with. When it comes to wearable computers and really the wearable computer market, this, it is incredibly hyped and it's something that we need to address. Most people don't have a wearable computer right now, but it's a topic, for example, that took over the computer electronics show completely. It, it, it was the center stage um, for that event. But most of the population doesn't have a wearable yet. So it's uh, this hyped future, a predictive future that we're dealing with and is really having consequences for us right now that needs to be dealt with. Most of my research is geared um, to helping wearers and consumers uh, and everyday people um, make sure that they are empowered as we move into this new era of wearable computing. And one thing that I, I like to say is that we need to protect the human cloud. Right? Cloud, cloud computing, uh, to me, seems as if it's a paradigm that's more for sort of a so social media giants and, and companies that are um, like Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram. What I'm asking is that people begin to think of their own personal information as a human cloud, their own personal cloud that needs to be protected. Wearable computers will uh, have to be recognized as within a paradox always. So uh, they will give us these wonderful sensors that will read um, our brain interactivity, our heart rate. Uh, they will enable us in our social interaction and um, give us access to our social media in ways we've never imagined. But at the same time, all of that information um, because becomes something that, that could make us vulnerable. And we always have to ask, um, our, while we're enabled in, in this new paradigm of wearable computing, how are we going to be, you know, we have to be careful to not be um, too vulnerable to it.